You look great, Bob. Your teeth look great. <laughs> you got white teeth. <laughs> the pearly white top. Yeah, the, the pearlies be pearly. Kind of, this kind of thing, eh? you want That's what say? she said. <laughs> Not to me, but. Oh. Shit. We look like you can. All right, we on. Let's keep it short and sweet. Toast Live Podcast. Yeah, we're done. Never mind. Toast Live Podcast. Maybe most authentic, most organic podcast out here. Let's go. Man, we haven't done a hey. complete internal podcast in a couple weeks. We're it's already a couple weeks into the year. Isn't this New the year. first internal? Of this the is the first internal of our internal 2024. Year. I think the yeah. last one you did was what? We don't back in December. We don't want to reopen. Back in December, I believe. Last year. Well, you know what? Right you know what? We left it. Yeah, hers okay. Was back let's in start December. right now. How how the fuck do we fix disagreements? <laughs> yeah, we have disagreements, so let's do this. I'm always right. Oh. That's how we fix it. I'm gonna call you out on your bullshit. I'm gonna let you be mad for two days, and then I'm gonna let you apologize to me. I'm gonna just look at the message. I was right. Yeah, I think, yeah. Honestly, out of this group, Pepe is the like mediator. No, I, I feel like every time there's a problem, I always text him on the side. I think but everybody texts me on the side. Everyone, everyone, has, everyone has their own group chats yeah. without the one person. <laughs> Nah, I was no, like, no, we do? Ask Pepe, I'm like, if I'm wrong, please let me know. And I'll tell her if she's wrong. Yes. <laughs> Which she's never so wrong, Pepe's, but Pepe's real. Pepe. That's right. Even though you tell and her I'll she's tell, wrong, she feels like she's wrong. And I'll tell all y'all, I told all y'all, y'all need to take it off the fucking group message and say it in person because all y'all sensitive motherfuckers, we'll, we'll say it in person too. all y'all sensitives are going to take shit out of context and get hurt. So let's just do it in person. Man, a special thing about this podcast, I have the boxing gloves in the closet. Let's run this. <laughs> let's see who last Chris, one you want to get him out? Oh, <laughs> definitely <laughs> not, bro. <laughs> hey. He's going to throw me over the hey. balcony. And... Nah, you know what? I think the, the good thing about our group and how we ex- express it, the prior, the prior podcast, is when you have a group that literally just correlates and, and fits into what we all want together, you're, you're going to have... It, it's bound to happen when you have a disconnection. I feel like you can't call them a friend if you can't mess around with them. You can't say the wrongs in them. But at the end of the day, you guys are going to be, you know, yeah. going to be cool, right? Yeah. It's, 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 a, it's a relationship where, obviously, there has to be some sort of disagreement or fight in order to get, get your relationship stronger. Like, if everything was perfect, yeah, that's kind of, that's a fairy tale. You have to go through these little dilemmas and little disagreements in order to build that and build that that armor around you to be like, yeah, man, my group been through this. We've done this. It's all, it's all good. We strong. We know what we want. It's, does that protect us from future arguments? Fuck no. How we are, we're walking red flags. But I'm a pink. green flag. <laughs> I'm pink. I'm a green flag. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm colorblind. I, I, I wouldn't even Mine's know. Pink. But I think that's just what makes us unique and and strong that we are able to have a conversation <laughs> at one point, and we get to again we get to come together. And I think one of the most beautiful things is we're here in San Diego all together running a podcast, first one of the year all together, and we get to enjoy our company. So, man, it's just been moving. We have felt like fast. Fast. stop fast. right. It's already what. End of January? End of January. Shit, we haven't recorded realistically in the last almost month. So we took it a big break individually. It didn't feel like a break. It didn't feel like a break. <laughs> it's nonstop. I think, yeah, I think we, we have a break, but we have other things to catch up on. Yes. Yeah. Which is family time, siblings, relationships, business, outside of what we already do. So yeah, we have a break, but a break. It's, really it's a break. never a break. It's never a break. It's, it's never just, a break. Oh, now I have time to go and work on that. And even when we started doing that, we're like, damn, I'm tired. And then even then, you're like, you think you have a day off, and then shit will happen, and it'll be like, yo, emergency meeting. What you mean, emergency meeting? Who called that, bro? Who called that on a Saturday at 8 in the morning? Yeah. And I was the first one there. All I'm going to say is, you know what? You know what? That's what I was going to say. First time. It was the first time for everything, right? (laughs) I thought I had to prove you guys wrong. You guys were talking oh, too much I mean, I didn't care. I, I wasn't. It wasn't to you. It was to Dusko. It was to Dusko. 
Peppa said 8.30. I was like 8.40. That's mm-hmm. pretty good for me. No, we told you 8 because you're always late. <laughs> and I said 8.30 because I knew everyone was going to end up showing up at 9. Hey, true, but that's true. That's true. I'm on Mexican time. Sorry. <laughs> and I'm on American time. Party's at 5, but realistic party's at fucking 8. So <laughs> you show up at 5 to set up. <laughs> you house set up. <laughs> you house set up. I tell you. And I think that's the problem with us is that we started been going to events or whatever. Mm-hmm. They tell us, oh, start time is at 8. So we show up at 8 and no one's there. Or nah, no LA like, events at start at 8 or 9. That starts like at midnight. <laughs> like, dude, like, no. Don't it's like I'm sleeping by then. Yeah, don't invite me at fucking oh midnight. Man, so I mean, really quick, let's talk about the relationship and the balance that we have. Obviously, it's we. Th- I think oh, we're gonna overpower this small, petite individual woman in our group. <laughs> small but mighty over oh, here. Oh my small fucking but mighty. god, bro! That's it's what with a big other <laughs> mouth. <laughs> That's what she said. What? Let's well, say with the big mouth, but. <laughs> bro. <laughs> Let's see that mouth. <laughs> what that mouth do? <laughs> Is it? Oh, <laughs> this one has a great personality, though. Yeah. It's emotion. It's emotion. It's emotion of the emotion. That's, emotion. that's, emotion. that's, that's emotion. adequate. That's that's, really, that's average. That's yeah. average right there. <laughs> Loving and caring. Alright, <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> Same. <laughs> okay, how do we go back? Okay. Can we go back to this? Rewind. Alright, how do we? What do you, for you guys' perspective? <laughs> So, <laughs> small but mighty. Small but mighty. All right, all right, let me let me flip it because I think we we kind of already just talked about like how we balance each other and like the friendship group. How are you guys doing now, entering this year and now being at the end of the first month of the whole year? If you want to go, you do. For me, I think it's just more. Um, <laughs> well, you guys stay too long. You guys should I go you first? Gotta, you gotta go. You gotta go. Keep it moving. No, you gotta but, go. We stay. Um, for me, this year, coming into this year, it was more of, again, just leaving everything to God. Um, even when it comes to the little arguments that we have as a group, um, just pretty much. Putting God in everything this year, as if like if I have a disagreement again when we had in our disagreement, um, I was so mad that day, and then the next day I was like, oh heck no, I'm gonna be petty. But that night I sat there, I talked to God, and I told Him I was like, show me your heart, show me um, if this is meant for me, you're gonna show me tomorrow how we act with each other, the conversations that we have, and and He showed it clearly as day, you know, we were able to sit down. I don't obviously don't have no hate or anger to you guys. I don't think I can hold that with you guys. Um, But this year is just more putting God in everything and just fully trusting him and knowing and asking him in every step of like, if this is for me, make it as clear as possible. Because as I feel like as humans, we we tend to take everything as little signs. And again, like the way Chris said last episode, two people listen to your prayers. And the same way that like God can listen to your prayers, the devil will too. And he will send you something similar, but not knowing that it's not from God, it's from the devil. And for me this year is asking God and showing him, asking him like, show me that this is your path in a way of like, show me a Bible verse in a prayer, in a dream or like, just show me in my heart, like, give me that feeling like this is from God and this is what I'm supposed to do. Yes. So that's me going into this year. Yes. Just trusting God and putting him and not having any fear <clears throat> for anything. What do you think is your different your mindset now entering this year compared to how you entered last year? I think my mindset hasn't changed just because I feel like I'm just a, con- it's a, it's a continuation from last year. Cause just because I've been implementing that change since, well, since the middle of last year, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm not that person like, oh, new year, new me, which is cool. You, you, obviously, mm-hmm. you do that, right? Yeah. But I feel like it's just a continuation. At least something new for me would be I attended my first time ever since well, I was like five years old. I, uh, I went to the church, not physically, but like online. That's okay. basically the first n- step. First step, yeah. That Baby was like, steps. That was the, the, I guess, the new thing. <laughs> Yeah. Of 2024, yeah. but it's like, um, it's still the same thing. It's just another year in the calendar, just continuing bettering yourself and just. And not just that, I feel more like people tend to judge churches a lot. And it's like the same way you go into open minds in other events. Why don't you go with an open mind to church or like whatever church you go to or whatever religion, like 
go believe something have an open mind you know like again you said that the last time you went was at five years old how much did your mindset change from then to now and then now you can see it in a different perspective you know oh yeah no. definitely like i was that person where i was not uh, i mean at five years old what yeah you're forced, yeah. You're forced right? to go to church to go. Well, i think it's just life too right like you you grow up like if you grew up the way similar to us which is hispanic household and i mean i know just other other races and, and generations too like they've they've done it but you know go to church and while you're going to church and as kids, you're excited to just go because you can get nachos after the church or food. <laughs> the right? buffet after? Yeah, the buffet after. I hate you waking up at Sunday in the morning. <laughs> what church y'all be yeah, going to, know. my boy? I did not. I didn't have nachos or buffet. So, grew up in Baldwin Park, so if you're around the El Monte uh, section, there's one there. Okay, and I know what church you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, so, I mean, just, <laughs> what the right? Is so the first lady of one Hola, of the Lupita? Yeah. 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 yeah, so, like, you go Hola, and Lupita. you're... Your understanding isn't like, oh, I'm coming here to surrender, to talk. You're just there because your mom or your dad told you, right? <laughs> yeah. And if you really think about it, too, now and seeing those families, those parents that were taking their three, four kids to church, all dressed nice for a reason, it's because their base of household was that. Mm-hmm. When we grew, started growing up and older, what do we, we go away from everything because we're like, man, you don't know more than me. You don't know what I'm going through. You hear your mom or your dad tell you what to do in life and how to live it. You're just like, man, why are you telling me? I don't know this. You don't know what you're talking about. I, I know. But now growing older and maturing, you miss that. Mom, dad, tell me. What should I do? Tell, mm-hmm. tell me. How do I go through this? How it's should like, I? Please help me. How guide me. I, offer me some advice. Yeah, help me. Help me. Like, yeah, I know I didn't used to listen to you before and I never did, but... Mom, like, I really need you. Things change. Mentality changes. You That's what it is. mature, basically. You're on your terms because now you had to go out in life and learn it yourself. And knowing that the, as messed up as it sounds, and yeah, definitely, you know, you're about opening up and like people caring about you. But fact of the matter is, life doesn't give a fuck about you. Life's hard. Life is hard to every single body. Doesn't make you any more special than the next the person next to you. Life is gonna give you different trials and tribulations because that's what life is. But man, if you think it's unfair, the person across the street knows it too. The person around there knows it too. And then the millionaire sitting in the penthouse knows it too. But what did he do differently? Mm-hmm. Right? So it's just like life is unfair, but what how do you react to it? Everyone has their own struggles. You have your own struggle. Like I can't say my life's harder than you. Yeah. Like, who am I to say that, right? Yeah. You you're explaining the same thing I am. Everyone in this room. Yeah. So everyone has their own struggles. Yeah. And just we just were able to come together and speak about it in some way, shape, or form to like, hey, let me just tell you what I went through. Let me let me tell you what I this is how I heal, this is how I grew out from it. And shit, maybe in a way, some way, shape, or form, what I went through and what how to, how I healed from it helped you heal from whatever situation you're going through. May not be the same same situation, but it may have a similar ending, right? Like it's it's real real life relationships. You everybody starts all loving the dovey. Some somewhere down the middle, shit hop, pops off. At the end of the day, what happens? That the same the same thing to everybody. You break up and you're heartbroken. What was your healing process? Well, shit, I went through this and this. Ah, oh, man. But how did you heal? Well, my healing process was this. I had to embrace. Oh, man. Okay. I need to do that now. I need to, I need to choose myself now. Right? And I think that's just it. But do you, did you start your year off differently than the way you started the previous year? And yeah. if you did, what was the difference? Again? I mean, it's like last year, didn't believe in myself. This year, I believe in myself. And I know that everything's going to happen for a reason. If it's meant for me, it's meant for me. You and I have had this conversation, right? Yeah. I'm going to give myself this year and next year. If it's going to happen for me, if it's meant for me, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. If it's not, then it wasn't meant to me. And that's okay. I mean, maybe I was only meant to be here for a season, right? Maybe my goal was, or my objective, purpose here was to... Like you said, we, you had the conversation earlier. It grew a little bit faster because you had us all on. Yeah. Maybe that's my goal. Maybe that's my objective. Maybe that's my purpose. It's like giving some know. flowers too. Like, yeah, you helped us here. You stepped up where the spot needed to be filled. Like you're doing an amazing job. Like you're um, you're very well spoken and you bring us all together with like emotional and like your quotes and stuff, right? But like, look, you got yourself your own. Like they sent you this yeah. bottle to you. 
And then mm-hmm. obviously now we're all experiencing it, but like that's a step. Like yo, I belong here. Like I, this was meant for me as well. Thank you, thank you. I think that's just it, right? Like knowing and realizing you are worth it, and you do have value, and you do matter in this world, and you do make a difference. And I hope everybody figures that out because shit, living life without a purpose or feeling like you ain't shit. That's not living. It's that's not, not living, living, dude. It's, it's like, tough. what's my purpose every single day? Yeah. Like, well, why am I here even? You know? Yeah. Well, check this out. React to it. I mean, let me know what you guys feel. But it said, I've never been good enough to make anyone stay. I feel like such a temporary person in everybody's life. That's me thinking when I I didn't know I had a purpose. That's me thinking, man, I don't deserve this person. Man, this person is way too good for me. And now, you, what do you think? I mean, at shit. least me personally, I, I, I saw that same thing. Because <laughs> we see the same shit. And we send each other the same, same quotes. Yeah, yeah, We're like, yeah. damn, I'm like, oh, I liked it? I'm like, oh, he already liked it. And I saw that and I was like, you know what? Maybe I was too good to stay in their life. My mentality changed, you know? Yeah. Now it's like, you know what? Maybe it's not about me being good enough. It's like maybe they weren't good enough to be a part of my life. Maybe it was just the wrong person. Yeah. Wrong person. That that. Or you, maybe you just needed to be there to teach them what it, you were there in a season where you need to teach them something, or yeah. you need to change their heart in a way. Yeah, because and, when you're pure, right? You're pure. Your love is pure, and there's not down the line when they don't find that same love back. What happens, man? That one person used to love me the way no one else did. Well, yeah, but now you're too late because now that person found someone that's able to embrace all that love. Maybe it's not found somebody. It's like maybe they just found their self-worth. Because you don't need somebody at the end of the day, right? Love yourself. Love yourself first. Mm -hmm. Or no one will. (laughs) (laughs) That's why I love myself. Yeah, no, it's, bro, it's, it's sad. If you love yourself and you, and you see your self-worth, then the people around you will see it too. It's like, how can you love someone if you don't even love yourself? You can't yeah. uh, radiate that energy towards that other yeah. person. And how can you expect someone to value you when you don't even value yourself? Exactly. Yeah. Right. I think I'm. I think I'm. I'm a piece of shit. So that person's gonna think the same way. But if I carry myself in a way that you can't second guess or question this person, well, that person's gonna think the same. Oh, you know what? Cool. Because the way you walk into a room, the energy is felt. You walk in very timid, very, and we know the energy. We know what the intentions are. Man, we know that's not for us. But you walk in head, chest out, head up high. What's up? My name is my name is Dusko. What up? <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, how's it going, guys? Uh, welcome to the most organic, most authentic <laughs> podcast. <laughs> nah, but it's true. <laughs> Your energy, your energy plays it, it, a lot. What, what is it? What do they say when the th- <laughs> some <laughs> some things are better are better off not said? And there's things that you don't have to say that should already be known. Respect me. As soon as I walk in, respect me. And if you don't know why you should respect me, well, now I'm going to show you by me showing you that respect. And if you choose not to do the same thing back, I'm out. That's what it is, right? Giving somebody a fair chance. Yeah, self-respect, self-love, right? Especially for, I know for a girl, it's a lot harder for a guy. It, it's easier for a guy to go out there and get her, their respect compared to a girl going out there and getting their respect. Like Definitely. I've, I feel like it's harder for people to take women serious. You got to work twice as hard. And it's, especially in spaces that are mainly male-dominant. I feel like a lot of people don't take women seriously, but I feel like this generation of women are breaking that. We're making it known. We're taking up space. We're not afraid to go up to dudes. There's so many videos I've seen even at the gym where guys are going up to girls and they're just, they're not, they're not budging. They're like, no, go around, do this, you know? And I think that's why I love this generation of women. You know, we're breaking those curses of like having men. Obviously, I'm still very traditional where it's like a men should lead, yes, but to a certain point. And as, again, just earning the same respect. You have to. Well, it's not even that you have to, but it's just like, what What are you trying to teach the next person? Right? You have a little sister. You have right? a daughter. You have a daughter. Yeah, have a what daughter. are you trying to teach your nieces? I mean, at least in my, like, I guess, my situation. Take, it's. I mean, take it to another extent, right? Because uh, we have daughters, right? 
and then you guys, some of you guys have little sisters, some of you guys have nieces, or you have little cousins. So if you're not paving the way for them to have sort of an easier upbringing than yours, then are you really using your life with a purpose compared to, nah, they'll figure it out. Well, shit, if they figure it out, then your parents should have never tried to break those curses. Because if you went through anything your parents went through and how they had to grow up, like, again, there is dads and moms that didn't finish high school because they had to work. There is dads and moms that had no education because they had to work. There's moms that didn't even go to school because they had to take care of all of the siblings and help out mom. And there's dads that didn't take no school, scholar, anything. Why? Because they had to go work in the field with their dad or their grandpa or their uncle. Mm -hmm. yeah. And to take it 10 steps further, you know, my parents migrated from Michoacan. When they came over here, you don't have the same opportunities as us being born here. They look at you and, nah, well, you're only, like, I've literally met last year some amazing human beings from Michoacan yeah. that were over here working in the fields while this kid was 19 years old working in the field over here. He had a wife and a daughter back home and barely even making ends meet. And the highlight of the week was them coming, coming out with to my grandma's house and just enjoying enjoying food. And it, it it's it's a step further too, but like, bro, they're working for maybe a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars minimum, and they're away from their families for three six months. So you're you're telling me that I don't have a better opportunity to take a step further and to try to help you and show you a little bit better? Come on, that's now I'm wasting my time, and I can't do my job if I'm not if not putting if I'm not putting myself forward. In order for them to live a better life, my little sister, my daughter, my son, you my cousins, to, and then the younger generation, we're we're advanced. We 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 know a little bit of something, mm -hmm. but those kids that are learning so fast on those tablets and computers and what they watch, they're learning a lot faster. So if you don't put the right things in front of them, how do we expect life to even get better? And that's the point of every generation, right? Improve yeah. every next generation. They can't backtrack. They can't get worse than we can. The goal is to them to improve every single generation. Yeah, it's it's it has to. It's not. It's never going to be easy or just sell like a, a smooth sell. There's always you can give them a cheat sheet to life. Like you can help yeah. them a little bit. You can give yeah. them a little yeah, so a little advantage that maybe we didn't have. Yeah, like right? I I asked my my one of my high school players the other day, right? Because I feel like she's been kind of just been really off. She's been trying to make everybody else happy, but not her. So now I got to hit her with the other the questions that we ask each other. Are you happy? No, I don't know. Why aren't you happy? No, I don't know. Okay, what are you doing right now that you know you're trying to rep replicate this? No, I. I I just don't know. She starts crying. I'm like, hey, like, it's okay. It's okay to not feel okay. It's okay to not know what you're feeling. It's it's understandable. But what's not okay is you not acknowledging that you're not okay. What's not okay is you trying to pretend like everything is good, good and, and happy. Again, we've been through high school. We've done all this, right? We've been to parties. We've been out to parties with other people and drinking. I was, I was like, once you stop doing that, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm 28 years old. There's still more parties. There's still more nights out. There's still more other days where people are going to invite you out. But what people don't like is when you have a voice for yourself. So when you decide to make yourself happy, life will change for you. Now you'll know why you're not feeling this way. Now, if, I, if I'm sad today, I know why. Not compared to like, damn, I'm sitting here and I'm just depressed, bro. I don't know why. Now it's like, I know. I know the root. I know where I have to work. I know what I got to let go. I know I need. I know what I need to address. But, like, our high school kids, when they're living a life where they got to make social media look happy or their friends happy, that's not life. But, again, it's just like we've been through it. We learned the hard way. We've been like, man, my mom doesn't know. My dad doesn't know. I feel like we need to, like, learn the, our, through our mistakes. Like, we yeah. have to go through that. Like, And then from there, either you get it and within the next moment, all right, I'm going to change. I'm going to take that away. I'm, I'm going to stop doing that. Or it's going to take years, and then, unfortunately, other people aren't in that position because they're still doing the same thing, and they don't know they're happy, yeah. they don't know... Or, unfortunately, something just be. very hard happens, right? I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, one of the highest suicide rates is through our youth. They don't know how to cope with anything, and it comes with our parents being knowledgeable of what mental health is, right? Mm -hmm. Now, 
our parents know a little bit more because of us and what we're giving them and showing them. But, I mean, if you're stuck in your old ways, how we said earlier, you're sad. It's because you're always on the TV or you're always out. It used to be always like, yo, then do something. Yeah. If you do something, you don't have time to Go be clean. sad. Know, Go clean my dad your room. Like, you're you sad, you're bored. Sad. Go yeah. get a broom. Yeah. That's right. Start sleeping. Yeah. That's dishes. because they didn't know better. They yeah. were never allowed to show emotion. They, yeah. they repressed so many emotions growing up. That to them, it was like, all right, cool. I didn't even have time because they were doing different things than we had to do. It's so crazy how you say, like, they suppress. Because seeing I'm the oldest daughter in a Mexican household, and my mom walked in on me crying. She really opened the door, looked at me, and she was just like, just don't stay there. Well, because she's now, like, been through some stuff. So she just looked at me, and she had nothing to say, but... Just don't stay there too long. And she closed the door and she walked out. They don't know how to react. They, they don't. don't know how to they help. She'll like, just look at me. She'll just be like, close the door back up. And she just knows to give me my time. You, you know why? Like, I mean, just to kind of have this ended on this part. But like, even talking with my mom, bro, like she's one of the strongest women I've ever known in my life and will be ever forever be my, my rock. It's because if you were to ask your mom, mom, how are you doing? Or how did you grow mm-hmm. up? I just I played the role. I needed to be the one, strong one, the strong one. I needed to hold it down for my husband and my kids. I needed to hold it down growing up for my brothers and sisters and parents. So when you, they never, they never had time like we have now that we have time to talk about what we're doing or how we're feeling. They never had that. Why? Because it's always if we feel our life is on go. Imagine theirs that was at ten times the speed because they had to actually make it. They had to grow up a lot faster than we did. Yeah, like if you if look at where you sitting right. at, where you living at, where like where you sleep at right now. If you're living with your parents, first generation, how hard did they have to work in order to afford a what was it back then, like a hundred fifty thousand dollar house? Yeah. And now we're over here making X amount a year, eight, whether it's sixty to a hundred thousand. They still can't it, afford it. It, it, it took that them. It took for them to earn that in years. So it's just like for them, it's like they're in a timestamp of. Well, you don't have enough time to feel. You want to sit down and feel like that? Get up. The, the You got to go make food. Everybody's coming home already. Right? So, like, our moms are so sacred because they will never tell you what they're going through or feeling. But because they had to grow up a certain way of, like, my feelings never mattered. And if I say about it, no one cares about them. Man, so, shit, where do we go from there? Where else? It's been good. <laughs> I just been honestly, it's been flowing really good. Let me see. I had actually a for you guys. Um, kind of in in a sense of like, <sighs> or how, like, how do you how how do, give us a little recap in San Francisco? How do you feel? I told you guys before we went, and I told you guys now. My best moment of the year was going to San Francisco with my family. We almost died, but we we almost did. We almost. I mean, there, there's a lot that of was there's crazy, there's though. a lot of factors that, was that happened. Crazy. There. But no, I think um, there's a couple things about San Francisco and, and a couple things about traveling with your with your friends and your loved ones, which we're doing now still, and it's it's different. You travel with the right people, with the pure purest hearts. Parents' intentions, life is great, right? Now I get to look back at all the memories that we made, the pictures that we took, the videos that we took, and I'm just like, damn, I just took a trip with my best friends. And, like, what else? What else do I need, right? Like, yeah, I think when you're fulfilled in a sense where you have everything in the world and you have love, you have friendships, you have relationships that are just filling every single part of your life, you admit nothing in this world can happen and be like, man. It's, it's like, like you're not missing out on anything. Yeah. It didn't matter if, like, it wasn't, like, the best part of our, like, trip ever. Yeah. As long as we were all together, it was, like, it was worth so it. It matters, right? right? Yeah. 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 A lot of the time, I, it's the people you go with. Yeah. Where you go with. Like, um... I mean, put in perspective, right? Driving back from San Francisco was hectic. Bro, driving well. back was... I was ready to fight this one right here. Oh, my man, God. I mean, speaking... I sleep, look, all I, all I oh. know is I was made fun of for driving. And I sh- shout, out to my boy, shout out to my boy here staying up with me about 45 hours <laughs> all together. You <laughs> knocked the... Like, I, I remember I, the listen, train listen, tracks. Like, you're you <laughs> flew at those train tracks. All right, so those who don't know... San Francisco and like aspect of Los Angeles, it is a six-hour drive. 
a six hour drive of pure just green each side <laughs> right <laughs> green or I water you know i don't want to go through that i <laughs> do not want to sit in a car for six hours no so you what happened it. Oh, no, I mean, wait, wait, let me get to wait, it. Wait, let's put, let's put it in perspective, right? So I had the idea of like, all right, we're going to go to San Fran. Well, if we're going to San Francisco, we need to go sightseeing, right? No. So there's other cities around there that you can kind of stop before it. Because check-in is still not to like 1.30, 2 o'clock. <laughs> okay, of course. So my idea was like, all right, cool. We're going to stop by Caramelo by the Sea, right? Caramelo. Carmel. 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 See? Carmel. Damn, you're so, you're so uncultured, oh, my boy. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell you don't travel. <laughs> no. <laughs> was that your first trip? <laughs> Dude, He's my, scared my, of flights. That's my, why he don't go. No one never let me out of the house. So. <laughs> no, so I thought I was like, all right, I'm going to get home early today. I'm going to pack everything. And I should at least get a couple hours of sleep. And then we can all drive out. <sighs> Fuck no, never happens that way. Got home until uh, maybe eleven thirty. Shout out to my boy Andrew for pure gains. We got he bought me in and out, so that's why I went. <laughs> Anyways, so I got home until eleven. Packed, loaded up the the truck, packed all my things. By the time I showered, laid down, it was like twelve thirty. The pickup time for Genesis at the first was at one thirty in the morning. So I woke up like I want something, and I was like, Jesus. Well, it's, if we don't leave now, like, it's we're going to put it off, everything. So we left. Picked one up. As soon as I picked her up, she's laid down in the back of the back seat, laid down. That was it. That was a wrap. It helps being small. <laughs> Short. <laughs> picked, up, picked up that bed. That's a big ass truck. What you talking about? You could be my size. And For real. Okay. That truck is huge. Picked For up that bed. As soon as picked up that bed, we gassed up one more time, and then we drove uh, down the 101. So if you're familiar with the 805, Santa Maria, uh, Oxnard, all those areas, then you know the way that I'm talking. So I took the scenic route. I went PCH. So I took a 40 minute uh, flight. Two in the morning right when everything there. was dark. It was it was, it was beautifully it, dark. As soon as we hit, I think as as soon as we hit Oxnard, it was all foggy. So I'm driving, you know, a little bit above speed limit. Genesis is laying completely down. Me and Bever just talking, so I couldn't see maybe a car in front of me. As soon as that happened. Then all of a sudden, I ran into the train tracks. So that I hit the train tracks at a high speed where Genesis was laying down, and she just elevated. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> she, she hit the top of the truck almost. I like hear she was low. I hear was. <laughs> she was like, oh, oh fuck. fuck. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck, guys? So, so nice and after out. that, we didn't hear a word. And I told Ben, I was like, dude, you think she's going to cuss and file back and see? I'm like, <laughs> if she's thank gonna cuss, God. No, she ain't complaining if she, right now. If she's going to cuss, she shouldn't go back to sleep right now. <laughs> so I think to get to uh, Carmel by the Sea, it was at least seven hours. It was about seven oh hours. Genesis did not wake up until an hour prior to getting there. So I don't know what she's talking about being tired. When it's she such a long, it's been time. such a long I trip, was sick. guys. I was sick. She woke okay, up I was, then. I was trying to like get better by the time we get to San Francisco. Anyway, I so we up, we so. did that. We got breakfast. We went by the, by the ocean right before the tsunami, <laughs> the tsunami fucking hit right there. <laughs> so we saved ourselves. We got to uh, San Francisco. I think. What is it, like one something? Like two. About one. And everybody knows, if you lay down, fall asleep, That's you're it. fucked. You're going to fall asleep for a couple hours. Pepe was already been up since 7 a.m. the day before, 6 a.m. the day before. I was up at 7 a.m. the day before. So we're just on a fucking good one with two energy drinks in. So we went out. We did our thing. Enjoyed it. Everybody, we went sightseeing. <laughs> I think the worst place was uh, the little S, the snake thing. Because oh. we couldn't oh, see shit. Snake. You can't see shit. Yeah. No. You gotta Lombard, the picture. No, it, it poured on us. The th- thunderstorm <laughs> of the year poured on us. And all you could see, you can't even see the S. We were down on the hill just looking at And I'm like, down. hey, I think you need to be at the top to see the S. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, and we're like, hey. No, you because said we were it. at the top. Yeah, we're at the top. We, we could have still, we even still couldn't see anything. We went to the down. bottom. We didn't see nothing. We but didn't like, see you nothing. had to be at, the, at one of those buildings. Oh yeah, at yeah. the yeah. bottom, yeah. right? Yeah. We and we're anything. like, hey, maybe you got to be on top so, of the roof. Jose over here, you know, we went through our night. We, everybody had a good time. The next morning, Jose was supposed to catch a flight at eight oh, to go back, man. so he doesn't have to drive with us. <laughs> and it's so funny that we woke up a little later, about eight thirty, and I'm just in the restroom, you know, taking a little meeting in the restroom, and I got a message. Hey, Pop, where you at? Damn well knowing he has my location. He was like, hey, uh, we kind of missed our flight. Can you pick us up? And I'm like, who made fun of who for driving? <laughs> pick the moose to it now. Blame the bartender from the night before who made that fishbowl. So 
You're I don't know welcome. what you put in. You're welcome. That was a good. Dude, I didn't should, either. You I didn't either. You in bed at 10 p.m. Bro. Well, y'all should have been doing it. You you wouldn't have missed your flight. <laughs> <laughs> you everything everything your happens flight. for a reason, no, right? You know everything what? happens for a reason. As soon as you went back to your room, me and Pepe had gone to McDonald's, so we surprised Genesis with some McDonald's. Surprise! Yeah, yeah, fucking two in the morning, she was like, "You guys are fucking annoying." <laughs> Get out of here! No, like but shut the fuck <laughs> up! And she's eat, like shoving a, a fucking nugget in her mouth. It's like nugget after nugget. But point all is, I learn is don't get drunk the night before and always fly to San Francisco. Nah, you that know what you should have learned. You know what you should have learned. What? Book a ten a.m. flight, my boy. Not a seven a.m. You would have like made that one. It was New Year's Eve. I want to get home. Hey, but I'm not gonna. Lie. I don't think ten a.m. is better than fucking. What time did you get home? Five six p.m. <laughs> After A, <laughs> no one knows, but after Chick fil A, Chick fil A, yeah. Wow. They got chick fucking big. They left us starving, bro. Bake? They left us starving. You know what? I had the taco, man. It was my niece's birthday. That's right. That's right. No, but I, I didn't. I, I starved. I, I, no think I, I think after like the whole like trip, one, very, very just grateful and appreciative of mm-hmm. the opportunity that we were able to have simply because of the things that we do. We sit down, we have a conversation, we record, we put it out there for the world to see and resemble and, and relate to. And we're able to have Children that. Children not going to go back home. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, able to, we're able to have that. And again, it's the same thing here. We're in San Diego. Everybody's here. We're having our first internal podcast of the year in San Diego. So it's one of those things where, ¿Qué más me falta en la vida si tengo todo? What else do I need in this world if I have everything? I have everybody. Nothing. Whatever is meant for me will be for me, and whatever is not, it's cool. You know, I'm not. I'm not asking anymore for things. I want this. I want that. Why do I have? Now it's like, man, I have this. Great. And one, you shouldn't even be able to ask. You shouldn't have to ask. Yeah. You should just be there. In every aspect, things, materialistic things, and people. I want love. I want love. Well, shit. Maybe love is gonna come unexpectedly. Or hey, I want peace. I want I want peace in my life. I want I want to heal. Well, maybe that shit's gonna come when you don't expect it. But you have to do, you have to go and do that work that you were so much trying to avoid. Now you have it. You know what I and mean? Not just that. I think you have to go through that to really understand peace. Yeah. To understand what it is. Yeah. Like you can't get peace without the hurt. You can't have peace without the chaos. You wouldn't understand peace. No. You wouldn't know what it is. Exactly. Yeah, you gotta go through it. You gotta go through the storm to understand what rainbows look like. You know what I mean? Like, it. I don't know. It, it's so cliche. It's it sounds so cliche and so easy, but fuck, we know damn well that to become, to heal, to be at peace, and to be happy, man, that shit was a that shit was a storm and more. Where I didn't know when this shit was gonna end, but um, now that, thank you, pray. I appreciate you. Now that it's over at that time, I'm not saying that's the only battle I'm ever going to go through. There's more coming, but now when something shows up, ah, cool, I know how to handle. I know how to kind of maneuver through it. And and if I don't for whatever sort of reason, okay, cool. We'll figure it out. You know, maturity is understanding. I need to understand why this shit happens. I need to understand why people leave my life. I need to understand why that person over there did me dirty. It's, It's cool. You know, maybe they weren't meant to be in your life forever. I'm okay with it. Now you lost out on me. So now the joke's on who? Motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds personal. <laughs> nah, it is, bro. I, I was talking that. to you I about I also feel like it also helps, uh, obviously, with the lesson of you, yourself. Now you know how to put boundaries up. Now yeah. you know your boundaries. Now you know um, what you will and will not allow in your life. So it isn't always like the lesson of losing that person, but the the gain of like knowing your own boundaries and mm-hmm. uh, again respecting yourself is learning nice. how to respect yourself at another level as well. Yeah, yeah, that, that's just it. Like, I mean, we just had a conversation the other day of like the check in, right? One saying how we feeling and stuff, mm-hmm. and me understanding like, damn, that motherfucker over there was doing me dirty for what? For him to get a a step further than me. It's like, nah. Like, I know your get back is coming, but not for me. As much as I want to be revengeful, it's not up to me no more. It's up to a power above that will do it at his time and his terms, not mine. Like, if I show you attention and energy, then I'm I'm wasting my time. There's no need for that. I'm going to let yeah. the clown have the circus. <laughs> 
No comment. No comment. I'm not a. I'm, everybody no turn. Comment. Everybody turn. Everybody turn. Everybody turn. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's just that understanding, coming to terms, and knowing that as cliche as it sounds, yo, this is our fucking year. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I'm taking what's mine, not a penny more, not a penny less. Shout out Nipsey Hustle. I know he said it, but I don't want nothing more than what's meant for me. Anything that's not, that's not it. But what's for me, I'm coming for it. And if that's the stage where we're at right now, right? Yeah. I think all of us are at that stage in life mm-hmm. it's like i didn't step up for x reason but now it's like i'm coming for what's mine same with jen i mean it took what like a year and a half of us coming in and out of the pod yeah to what was it maybe three months ago we officially started yeah. being on the yeah. pod and it's like hey i mean our time a year and a half ago wasn't it but now it's like it's our time, our time. yeah knowing finding your purpose finding your voice finding the what you need to be doing and what you're really good at, it's like um, what is what is that thing when you, you find when you're good at something without putting you're putting your least amount of effort. That's your gift. What's your gift? Well, shit, us Damn. talking is our gift. It's something that you literally don't put a lot of effort into it, but you're succeeding in it, and you're look at where you're at now because of it. That that's why God put you here. You know, again, Jen has been a, a big voice and a big part of my life spiritually because of the things that she has told me and the things that she has sent me. Man, her power and her gift is being able to let others heal without her even knowing and understanding that part just yet. But her being on the podcast is showcasing that her words can also heal somebody else, right? The mm-hmm. the video that went super viral and that's still going, you know, people resent to that. You know, you guys individually, you as a trainer, you as part of being the podcast, your gift that you guys have is to be able to give to others. And you do, and you guys do it in such a manner that it looks like, man, that fool putting no effort. Or that fool just doing it. Ah, he, he's just good at it. Oh, man, he's really good at it and helping. Look at that. And he monetized. What more do you need? What more do you want? So it's just understanding what your gift is. And I encourage everybody to find that out, figure that out. At any point in your life, you said it in the previous podcast, a um, couple couple episodes ago, where it's just like it's never too old yeah. to dream a new goal, or yeah. something like that. Yeah, you're never too old to change what what you want in life. You're never too old to understand what life is, and you're never too old to figure out what you want. Like you're, there's no age limit. If you're in the 18s, if you're 25, if you're 35, 40, 50, you're never too late. You're at the right time. That's just the time that you figured out it was for you. If you don't want to miss your mark. Yeah, I don't. We're not the only ones to say. Gary Vee says it all the time. You're 30, you still don't know what to do. Perfect. You're at the right time. But now it's time to take action. So now what are you going to do about it? You know what you're good at. You know what, what comes back to you tenfold. Are you going to take it or are you going to let it pass you by? And what I tell you guys all the time, hey, we're really good at this. People love this. Come on, let's do this. Because I don't know when this shit going to happen once again. I don't know if this is if this is only a way for a little bit and then we gotta miss it. It's it's right now. So So going based off of that, this was supposed to be my quote, but now I'm gonna say it. Run um, it. This is quote, quote time. <laughs> quote time. Let's do it. Right. Quote time. Let's uh, do so this. So this is actually a Bible verse. It's it's, it's I, I always mess this name Love up. Excleastes eleven from four to six. It says, But there are some things that you cannot be sure of. You must take a chance. If you wait for perfect weather, you will never plant your seed. If you are afraid that every cloud will bring rain, you will never harvest your crops. You don't know where the wind blows and you don't know how a baby grows in a mother's womb. In the same way, you don't know what God will do and he makes everything happen. So begin planning early in the morning and don't stop working until evening. You don't know what what might make you rich, maybe everything will be successful. So pretty much saying, like, you can't be afraid to start. You can't wait for the perfect weather. You can't. There's no such thing as perfect weather. Plant your seeds, do the work, and let trust God to lead the way. Yeah. Man, I love that. appreciate you for that one. I know that's going to help out a lot of people. When they that has thing helped me out with just going back to school next month. I'm so nervous. Mm-hmm. But it's like, 
I'm planting those seeds now. I'm putting the work now. I'm waking up every morning. I'm working. I'm putting my, I'm putting everything into it. And right. at the end of the day, I don't know what it's going to lead me, if it's going to be successful or not. But I'm trusting God and I'm trusting that he's going to bring me the perfect weather for it to grow, you know, whether it's to help a couple people or a lot of people. It's, it's going to be my mark. It's going to be what he's putting me out there to do. And I'm not going to be afraid to put in the work for it. Proud of you. Love that. It's too cold, guys. Where we at? <laughs> Got you. Don't let other people dim your light. Just because they're confused doesn't mean you're confused. I was ready this time. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're a new him. All right, Bebe, what's your quote? I'm going to keep it super short. Uh, your only limit is your mind. Oof. And I think that applies to everything in life. Hell yeah. All right. What about you? Very simple. My heart wants love. My mind wants success. But my soul wants peace. That's all I want. Because of the my. I'm just kidding, bro. I mean, I, I can't that. even cry anymore. <laughs> no, I just said it the other day. I said no as crying. Much as, as much as I want, like, tears to run down, it, all, I'm so proud of that. We've done so much in internal work that the only tears that ever come out is because seeing the growth that we've been through. Happy tears. Happy tears. Right. Now it's different. You know, it used to be tears of, of crying out for help. Now it's tears of of just uh, being grateful. And, you know, obviously there's certain events and moments that make you sad of what used to be. And, you know, sometimes you're not able to hug certain people anymore in life. But I know I'm doing my job to make them proud. And I hope I get to have that conversation with them a long time from now. But, you know, if if they're hearing me, if my angels are hearing me, I hope I'm making you proud. But until I see you again, we'll have that You'll conversation. meet them in another lifetime, yeah. in another universe. But for now, I'm going a, I'm to a shine, shine light on, on them, right? Ernie, uh, my abuelito Salvador, you know, my tío Jerry, that helped me be here. And before it used to be a lot of pain through this podcast because I was I was driving off of pain. Now it's like, nah, I gotta make you proud and I gotta share your story and what you taught me and now I gotta teach them. Other than that, we're good. This is a it's a good podcast. We ain't we ain't pivoting like other people. You know, we we stuck to our guns. We've stuck to what mm-hmm. we've done because we've been real to what we do. You know, and if you love something, you're re- you're really authentic about something, you never change up. Never change up. You never switch it because that other person or that person may, is is like, no, no, no. I'm real to what we are. You may not like it, but I just know other people may resent with it. And shit, count, what? what did we just say right now? Everybody counted us out, but shit, we counted ourselves in. Like it or not, we fucking here. It's also like podcast, baby. That's the way we fucking yes, do it. Like, now I do got a platform. <laughs> <laughs> she's an influencer oh, now, huh? She, now I got a platform. She, she's an influencer another, now. Another internal podcast in the books, baby. But, man, my team, I love you guys. Shit, first internal here in San Diego. Maybe next time in LA and Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix, I'll be inside you. <laughs> that we're definitely I'm ta- flying. I'm taking a and flight. I'm, we're flight. Flying. I'm taking a flight. I'm driving over. We're flying. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. <laughs> Check in's not the one. <laughs> but just like podcast, very most authentic, most organic podcast out here. Cheers. A toast. toast. Imaginary toast. with Jen. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs>